Right, hey, tell you that, champs. Now, today, we're going to actually find out can the new iPad Pro replace your real computer? Or basically, can it replace your laptop? We're going to have a look at some of the game changing new features of this iPad Pro. Now, if you guys are new around here, come on, sub up, join the world train, hit that bell. I will be comparing the iPad Pro to the MacBook Air, to the MacBook Pro, and even I'll chuck in Lenovo C942 in one just for good measure. So, I will be comparing all those, see what's best as a normal everyday computer. And for many years, Apple have been trying to tell us, what is a real computer? They've had this sort of condescending, nebulous propaganda ad campaign, which they have two new ads for this campaign, basically trying to convince us to buy an iPad to replace our real computer. Now, I'm not going to go down the semantics of what is a real computer. I mean, a calculator is a real computer. But for most people, a real computer is a laptop, Windows, Mac, you know, even Linux maybe, or a desktop. But most people have laptops these days. And that's what people think are a real computer. I'm not here to tell you whether that's right or wrong. That's what most people think. And I have myself bought a Surface Pro 3. And I know people have tried iPads as normal computers and they just... Yeah, no one's buying it. The iPad hasn't been able to replace like a normal laptop as of yet. Now it's had like keyboards and accessories and that and some of these features may change that. And hopefully we can take the iPad out of no man's land where it's not really a computer, but really is it just a big iPhone where I can do most of the things I do on the iPad on my iPhone, but then some of the things I can't do on the iPad that I can do on my normal computer easily. Yeah, you get the idea. Just walking around Australian university campuses, I can tell you even like younger people, you would think it would be generational, but even younger people, 17 to like early 20s, they're all using laptops. And most of them are actually using the old school MacBook Air. That is the number one computer I see at universities. Now, there are more PCs overall, but if we're talking about one specific model, the MacBook Air, it's around 38% of the computers in university campuses. And most of the people I know that have tried to use their iPad as their normal computer, and I know there are some niche usages for the iPad that are superior to what a laptop can offer, even like a laptop tablet. And there's no disputing that the iPad is the number one tablet. Without a doubt, those people have just regretted buying the iPad as their normal computer. It just hasn't worked so far. So now, you know, Apple can say your next computer is not a computer. And even with the latest ads, they're just confusing people because they just tell them everything the iPad can do, all this Swiss Army stuff it can do. It's like a jack of all trades and a master of none. We just want to know, can it replace our laptop? Don't confuse us with all that stuff. Can this replace our laptop? And I think they've Ooh, they might just be there. Now, I guess the game-changing feature with the new iPad Pro is cursor support. We have trackpad support and the magic keyboard. Okay, so I think this is the killer feature where you can actually make it feel like a laptop. And I know you've been able to get keyboards before, but it's got to sit on your lap normally like a laptop. That's why I never liked the Surface Pro 3. It just didn't work for me. Even though I bought one, I've got one still. I prefer a normal laptop. It's more comfortable. With this new magic keyboard, the actual display floats and you can recline the screen like a normal laptop and you've got a keyboard. Now it does look like a bit of an ergonomic nightmare because the keyboard Keyboard's so thin and so flat. Now the feel of the keyboard I have no doubt is good, but being so thin like you know a laptop, usually the keyboard sits around 15 mil off the table or whatever. This one looks like the keyboard is less than a centimetre high from whatever it's sitting on and it's flat. There's no incline at all. So we'll have to wait and see, but this is a game changer. So now having a good backlit keyboard that has a trackpad and you've got cursor support and when you connect it to the keyboard the operating system looks more like what a traditional desktop environment looks like although a little bit more clunkier because you know you can't put you know five windows and five apps and resize everything the way you want it like a normal desktop environment it's still going to be clunky in that way with the multitasking and and just window management and stuff like that but it's a star and it is game changing to have that and can this replace your laptop I think if you're just buying an Ultrabook now, and yes, it can video edit. We know how powerful these things are, and it will be great for like using Photoshop and stuff like that, video editing, and especially if you're an artist and you're drawing and stuff, like it's superior to a lot of things out there. But I still think those sort of things are best done on a laptop or a normal desktop. 
just because of the precision of a desktop. I mean, you just look at the cursor here, it's like, you know, it's like a fingertip cursor. It's, and I know it changes to a single bar, and you've got to remember the apps have to support it because like, say, for example, Google Docs does not support the cursor and anything like that. So really, you're going to have to hope on third parties making things work right with this iPad Pro. And yeah, that may be a very long time. So I do think overall, compared to a normal computer laptop, it's going to be a clunkier experience and it's still sort of like in no man's land where most of the stuff I can do on this iPad, you know, apart from, you know, using keyboards and stuff, which you can do on an iPhone, but most of the stuff it's going to excel at, web surfing, email and stuff like that, I can do on my phone as well. Now, of course, watching content is going to be a much more superior experience on an iPad compared to the iPhone. But when I can still do 90% of what I can do on an iPad on my iPhone, sometimes it's just easier to do it on your phone. I find that even compared to a laptop sometimes, that's how I do it. It now has pro cameras as well. So basically the camera system of the iPhone 11, wide angle camera as well. And it does have that LiDAR scanner at the back too, which is great for VR and stuff like that. But really... I mean, they're trying to do this VR stuff until they find out something that it really excels at other than sort of niche things like, oh, I can put some furniture in a room or whatever. Uh, yeah, and most people won't care about that. Of course, these are very powerful. This A12Z Bionic chip, it's, you know, as powerful as, say, laptops it is and sometimes more powerful. But the biggest problem for me for this iPad, just having a look at it from afar, and of course, I will be trying to test it as my normal laptop. I'll try and do everything I do on my laptop on this iPad. So sub up for that video. Uh, I'm going to give you my honest opinion. Can it replace my laptop? We'll find out. But the biggest problem to me is how expensive it is. I don't understand how a iPad is so expensive. The iPad Pro is so expensive when you think of how much RAM it has. Apple make the CPU, so they're not paying Intel for a CPU, which is one of the biggest costs in the laptop. You don't get a keyboard with it. You've got to pay like, what is it? $250, $300 or whatever it is for the Magic Keyboard. So when you work out how much this iPad Pro costs with a decent amount of storage and you know the new keyboard, the Magic Keyboard, it's going to cost more than a MacBook Air probably be around a MacBook Pro price. At that point, it's not really good value. And considering you have a laptop, it's got everything there. You don't have to attach a keyboard or anything like that. It does everything I want it to do. And, you know, MacBook Air is thin and light as well. Or, you know, a Surface Pro or something like that. It's going to have a real hard time to try and beat those sort of products in being a better solution than those sort of laptops, especially at its price point. If it costs like a lot less, and of course you can buy the lower model iPads and get most of these features. But honestly, the resale value of iPad Pros compared to Macs is a joke. Um, the price of it is just priced too high for what you get. You know, it does have a cracking display though, that 120 hertz liquid retina display. Um, really, what they got to do is make this iPad Pro with the keyboard the same price or even lower than the MacBook Air. Otherwise, why are you going to get an iPad unless you have some sort of specific use? Let me know down there in the comments if you can think of a specific scenario where the iPad is going to be better than the laptop. Other than some niche usages, yeah, it's going to have great battery life and it doesn't have to be tethered to, you know, power like laptops have to be when you're you know using them all the time especially with heavy work but yeah it does look like a good upgrade with that new keyboard and the features of being able to have a trackpad backlit keyboard the new camera system of the iphone 11 the lidar scanner the extra power we're going to get with this 12z processor with beefier graphics you know you will be able to video edit play games and of course, with the pencil, it is a great device for artists and it's really good for consuming content like videos and stuff like that. And I guess it will come down to, can I play Civilization? Can I play Football Manager on this like I can my normal laptop? That's the reality here for me. <laughs> anyway, I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Stay tuned for these videos. Tally ho.